Okay, so the purpose of this video is to show you crafty moms how to make your own dog harnesses instead of, you know, buying whatever is available at the store. So I'm going to show you how to go from the pattern to the completed product. Okay, and the colors of my fabrics will change as will possibly the style just because I have some in each stage of the manufacturing of it. So that way I can, you know, do this a lot quicker for you. So anyway, so you have your pattern, you can draw it out, you can trace it from an existing harness that they have, but like I've labeled it here, you wanna have where your fold line is. And that's where your fabric's gonna be folded when you trace it and then cut it out. So this part is not going to be cut, only the rest of it will be. Okay, so here I've got the fabric and I'm going with a different style. This is um, what I call my ergonomic style. And I do want to apologize for any background noise. My kid is home on spring break and he is playing <laughs> go fish. So. You have your, your fabric, you're going to want to turn it to where it's facing, the top is facing each other. Here's your fold, okay, and then you're just going to want to iron it real quick so that you have that the crease and it won't shift on you. And then you're going to take your pattern and your marker, fabric pen, um, you can even use a regular pen on darker fabrics. I recommend like a uh, silver, uh, silver Sharpie. So we're just going to trace around this. And I'm doing this with one hand, so bear with me. shift in here and it doesn't have to be perfect because you'll get rid of those imperfections when you sew it but you want to try to get as close to it as possible so there you have and then <clears throat> all you're going to do from here is you're going to cut that out and then you're going to want to do the same with some polyfill, but you're gonna get like what you use for quilts. This gives it the uh, the padding inside to make it a little bit thicker, a little bit more durable. And um, so you'll do the same thing with this. You know, and you'll put that there, you'll trace it. You don't, don't iron this, it'll melt. Um, there's no need to iron it anyway. Trace it with a marker, cut it out. You're going to cut your two pieces out, and then you're going to lay them to where the top parts are. This one's already sewn together, so <clears throat> the top parts of your fabric are going to be facing each other because you're going to do kind of like a pillowcase. So, and then you put your polyfill on top here, and you're going to sew, and you're going to want to leave that gap so that you can flip it inside out like you do for pillows and then just sew around and then you're probably going to want to flip it make sure you get everything because sometimes it doesn't exactly line up so you'll have to go back and sew a second line a little bit you know further in so that you get what you're looking for and that there will be no holes when you turn it inside out. So this is what it'll look like after you've sewed the two pieces together. This is inside out. And make sure, again, leave that gap so that you can then flip it inside out like when you make a pillow. Okay, so now this is the one that I'm currently working on. I wanted to do a blanket, so I did the top and the bottom in fleece. And this is flipped right side out. So now, you know, your, your polyfill is inside for your padding and 
this is you know top and bottom and I made them match because I'm doing it as like a blanket for my dog uh, because we've had a few chilly nights here in Florida believe it or not and I keep her shaved down because she's a lot more comfortable in the heat so this will help supplement the fact that she no longer has her own natural coat so and this is the stuff that I'm at now I've cut it out I've sewed it together I flipped it inside out and then you're gonna want to go right around the edging with your sewing machine all the way around and you're gonna close up remember that gap you had in mine I believe was over here I left a gap on these I like to do on the side about that big and you're just gonna flip it in and then sew over the top of it and you're gonna want to iron this after or before you sew this when you flip it inside out make sure you get all the edging pushed out I use a ruler and just run it along the inside this fabric was a little bit easier so the only thing I really needed to use the roll to push out is here on these um but some of your stiffer fabrics you'll probably have to run it all the way to make sure you get those rounded edges and everything that you need and then you're going to iron it so that you have firm creases it will make it easier to sew and then you're going to run your sewing machine you're going to start up above your, your gap you tuck that in and then just sew all the way around okay now now it's a solid piece um, if this wasn't a blanket, if this was a harness, and this is a, a, a long blanket, um, so it's, it's extra long. Normally, if I just do a vest, it's about to here on my pattern, and that way it'll stop. But this is meant to cover all the way down to her tail. So, but normally, I'll do my, uh, choice fabric on top, and then I'll have, like, a, um, something something along this lines in whatever color that matches so this is a canvas you can also get some like waterproof type fabric which you can do both the top and the bottom and all of these are completely machine washable when you're done okay now you want to make sure to get your webbing which is this, this is what they make dog collars this is a, a medium weight uh, nylon Okay, and when you cut it to the length that you need it, keep in mind that you're going to be losing some of that length with the buckles and adjustable, adjustable uh, tri glides. And you're going to want to burn these edges with a lighter so that they won't fray. Okay, so you want to get all your pieces together. For a long coat like this, you're going to want two one goes around the chest one goes around the girth or the belly and then this one would be for my o-ring because I like to make everything functional even though it's a blanket to keep her warm if for some reason we needed to hook her up to a leash I still can and it's still gonna be just as strong okay and for this style this is like a conversion of the tactical that wraps around the front and you know with velcro or whatever and my ergonomic design so i've combined it so all i need to do is have a strap go all the way around in the front so it'll slip over her head so i won't need any buckles or velcro or anything for the front and i just need to do my straps now make sure you measure your dog so you know how far down from the back of her neck that you need to go for that first strap so that it fits properly behind her front legs or his front legs okay because you don't want it too far up or it's going to end up pulling and hurting the armpit basically and then what you do from that point you come back about three to four inches depending on how long yours like this is a long one so I'm gonna come back about four inches and put my girth strap or my tummy strap so that's where we are and I will show you what it's gonna look like 
Okay, I just want to show real quick what I meant about burning the ends of these so they don't fray. You're just going to run a lighter along it, and especially with the nylon, it, it, it tends to melt real easy, and then just pet it down. Burn any strays off. And there you go. And that's, that's all there is to that. Okay, so for this project, I'm going to do my o-ring like this so that um, it's double strong especially once it's sewn down onto the harness so you're gonna want to line it up and then you're just gonna slip it in the sewing machine and you're gonna sew but real quick here I need to change my thread so bear with me because you want your thread to match the color of your webbing because it helps hide any mistakes number one and then also too it's not so obvious and doesn't look very uh, amateur I guess is the word I'm looking for okay so I got my thread changed and I, I also want to point out real quick the reason why I chose an o-ring is be as opposed to a D-ring, the standard D-ring, is because D-rings with that straight part, when you have a dog that pulls a lot, it tends to, to bunch up, but an O-ring will spin with whatever they do. I mean, you have that little bit of bunch up, but the ring will spin, but a D-ring, it will not, it'll actually, and especially if you don't have a welded D-ring, um, it can actually split it and pull the ring off and then there goes your dog. So if you want to use D-rings, make sure they're welded, but I recommend the O-ring. This is one inch. Um, for heavy pullers, I choose to, to use a, a two inch O-ring and, um, it gives that extra strength and durability. But anyway, so now we're going to sew this together. And for this part, we're just going to go down the length of it, and then we're going to turn. We're basically making a rectangle. And turn. You're just holding it together, and you want to back stitch so that it doesn't come undone because you're going to sew it even more when you attach it to the harness. So you're going to cut these extra strings off and then you're going to burn them. And it looks kind of scary, I know. But it works and it also, especially if you have a nylon thread, makes them stiff and keeps it from pulling apart. But so there's your your o-ring attachment that part's done okay next we have our straps and keep in mind your your tummy strap is gonna need to be a couple inches shorter as you see here than your chest strap because the chest is the largest point for them and the tummy's usually skinnier um if you have a uh, puppy that likes to eat a lot more or likes to put on a few extra pounds and you can adjust that if you need to but usually um, this is this is what I recommend this is will give you the best results because if you don't do this one a little bit shorter and your dog has a really big chest and really tiny stomach like mine does because she's a husky so they have those big chest bones uh, bully breeds have huge chest bones and little you know uh, stomach as do boxers, greyhounds, you know, so forth and so on. Um, then when you go to tighten it down and adjust it to fit, you're going to go as small as you can go and then there's still going to be slack in there and it's not going to hold properly. So anyway, so you have this and how you do these is first you're going to sew your tri-glides on and you're just going to loop it around 
with just about an inch to spare. Let's see if you can see that. Okay, and then you're going to do this. This one, you're going to make a box with an X in it. So I usually start at the top and I run it back and forth. Okay, so I like to back stitch and sew it a few times, it makes it a little bit stronger. But ultimately, you're going to make a box and then cross an X in it for that extra durability. And that stitch on this one too. And then I find it easier to back stitch with the first line for the X. And then you're gonna go back over the same stitching that you already did to go across and then turn and go up again and then back stitch one more time. And there you go. So now you've got your tri glide on. And again, you're going to want to cut these strings and then burn them. So that you don't have those little frays sticking out. And there you go, you have your tri-glide. Now here's the important step. Get your buckle. The first one you're going to do this one, okay? And there's a reason. Okay. Now, this is where the overlap is. You're going to hide that. You're going to loop this through like this so that it's on top and loop it through and then you're going to come up here and you're going to go over the edges over the top of the other one and you're going to pull it and that's how you make them adjustable and just bring it down like that and there you go, you have your first one, and then all you have to do is sew the end buckle on. You make sure it faces the same way, so you're going to go up and over. And this one you're going to leave about an inch and a half and do a rectangle instead of a square with an X in the middle. Okay, so now we have our webbing straps made. Okay, now based on the measurements of my dog, I've laid it out on here. You're going to want to make sure oops, let me flip this around, that the corner is as close as you can get on each side. And then you want to make sure I did four inches. It's a big dog and a very long. And then I, I prefer to use these clips for the ends because sometimes like when you use the pins, especially with thicker fabrics, it can shift it and not sit right or bunch it up. So And these are also easier to remove, but in order to hold it in place in the middle, I had to use those. Now, here's, I've tucked this underneath there because that'll help add some strength to it and also hide the end of it. And you want to try to measure your, your distance as close as you can get to exactly in the middle. And um, you're just going to pin that as well and then you're going to sew this all in place. You're going to start at one end and go all the way down and then you're going to come up and then go all the way down and then with this one you're going to 
follow the lines that you already made when you sewed before, but then you're going to put an X. Okay, same here. Start at one end, you sew all the way down, up and over and all the way down. And you can also, if you don't want this on top, you like your fabric, you don't want it to, to um, contrast with the fabric, you can put it on the underneath, but just make sure that your clips are facing the right way when you do that but and so this is what you'll have adjustable and you also want to make sure that you're as close this edge as you can on this side and that your clips are matching on both ends so that you have the dangly you know ones that wrap around the tummy and come up and clip and it's very uniform that way so that's where we are right now Okay, so now our straps are, are sewed on, our o-ring sewed on, just remove your pins, and so all that's left is this front strap. So all you're going to do is I find it's easiest to line up if you fold this in half. Fronts matching. Okay, so you have you have it, you know, folded in half. It's gonna be straight off, and you're gonna want to get it kind of, kind of in the middle, and yeah, that's about right, about three inches. So I'm gonna come just a little bit more, a little bit more, three inches. Um. Generally, I do two inch webbing for the front strap, uh, but I do not have any right now in stock in red, um, and I really need to get this done for my dog, so we're, it would, it looks better, and it's a little bit tougher, um, and so it fits better in this spot as well, but you, you want to make it straight, and it's going to go around the front chest part which I will show you on my dog when it's complete. So you're going to pin that in place and flip it over, line it up in the same spot, pin it in place, and then you're going to sew that. But you want to make sure you do this last, because if you do this first, before these straps, then these are going to be really hard to do, because this holds it in that formed position, you know, like it's around the dog. So there you go. I'm going to sew that on, and then we're going to see what this looks like. Okay, folks, so here's Runa. Sit down. No, come over here. Come over here. Sit. Okay, so here's Runa showing off the final product. You have your strap in the front, and it goes from the back of her neck all the way down her tail. Runa, come over here. Come over here. Okay, sit. Speak. Speak. <laughs> Good girl. Say thank you. Thank you. Runa wants to thank you for <coughs> tuning in. Yes, you do. All right, folks. So, like, share. <coughs> Runa says subscribe. <coughs> subscribe. And we'll have more of these projects. We'll be doing them <coughs> on a regular basis, won't we, Runa? All right, give me a high five. High five. Good girl. All right, folks. Thank you.